Assalamu alaikum everyone. In hypertension, today we are going to talk about the management of hypertension. This management is very important as it covers most of the MCQs in the medicine paper. The target blood pressure of the patient's age less than 80 years in the clinic should be less than 140 by 90 mm of mercury and ambulatory or home BP measurement should be less than 135 by 85. But if the age is much older that is more than 80 years then the clinical blood pressure measurement should be less than 150 by 90 and ambulatory or home BP measurement should be less than 140 by 85. Management consists of non-pharmacological treatment and pharmacological treatment. The non-pharmacological treatment basically is to reduce the reduce the risk factors which includes reduction of weight, avoid alcohol, regular exercise in these patients, reduce the salt intake, avoid smoking and increase intake of fruits and vegetables and low fat diet. So these are basically the risk factors. These risk factors must be avoided to control the hypertension. The pharmacological treatment includes the various classes of drugs which should be used in these patients to control the hypertension. The first class drugs are diuretics which may be thiazide diuretics and loop diuretics. Thiazide diuretics basically acts on the distal convoluted tubule and blocks the sodium and chloride channels. As a result, there is a loss of sodium and chloride as well as potassium into the urine. So water osmotically follows the urine. So these drugs causes diuresis and nitriuresis. The thiazide diuretics consist of bendrofloam thiazide, which is most commonly used drug. The dose is 2.5 mg oral tablet daily and chlorothalate don't. So these two are thiazide diuretics. The comp compelling secondary indications for the use of thiazide diuretics are indications are if the age is more than 55 years that is older patients and black African American hypertensive patients, patients of congestive cardiac failure, secondary stroke prevention that is after the first attack of the stroke it is used for the secondary prophylaxis. The contraindications or these drugs should be cautiously used in the patients of diabetes mellitus as these thiazide diuretics causes hyperglycemia. So must be avoided in the patients of the diabetes mellitus and if the patient has gouty arthritis as these drugs causes hyperuricemia and also cautiously used in the patients with hypokalemia because these drugs are potassium losing diuretics it can exaggerate further hypokalemia. The next class is loop diuretics which includes furosemide and bumatinide. These drugs acts on the ascending limb of the loop of Hanley and inhibits the sodium potassium 2 chloride channels that is triad channel and then causes the loss of sodium and chloride and potassium into the urine and water osmotically follows. So causes nitriuresis as well as diuresis. The secondary compelling indications for the use of furosemides are if the patient has hypertension along with the heart failure and along with the renal dysfunction. So in the renal dysfunction furosemide can be used. But the contraindications or these drugs should be cautiously used if the patient has hypokalemia as loop diuretics are also cause hypokalemia and causes the loss of potassium into the urine. The next class which is very important or the commonly used important drugs are ACE inhibitors that is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. These drugs inhibit the conversion of angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. So there is vasodilation effect as normally the angiotensin 2 causes a vasoconstriction but due to reduced levels of angiotensin 2 by the action of these drugs, vasodilation occurs. These drugs include enalapril, lisinopril, and ramipril. The compelling secondary indications for the use in the hypertension are if the age of the patient is less than 55 years, that is younger as compared to the other class of drugs. So the indications are the younger patients, Caucasians or white patients and the patient has heart failure along with the hypertension or myocardial infarction or other cardiac diseases. Remember the most important point here is that diabetes mellitus. For the diabetes mellitus, these drugs are very important and these are gold standard drugs for the patients of diabetes mellitus or for diabetic nephropathy and also for the chronic kidney diseases can also be used for the patients or for the secondary prevention of the stroke as like thiazide diuretics. 
the compelling contraindications for the ACE inhibitors includes renal failure because these drugs can cause electrolyte imbalance. So these drugs must be avoided in the patients of renal failure. So these are contraindications and also these drugs should be avoided in the peripheral arterial diseases as these drugs especially in the cases of renal artery stenosis because these drugs can cause vasodilation and further reduces the perfusion of the kidneys. So in the renal artery stenosis, these drugs must be avoided and these drugs are teratogenic and fetotoxic, so should be avoided in the pregnancy as these drugs reduces the perfusion of the kidney of the fetus in utero. So the other class is angiotensin receptor blockers which includes the candy certain, low certain and bell certain. Angiotensin receptor blockers are basically direct inhibitors of angiotensin 2. So the mechanism is almost same as that of ACE inhibitors. But remember, these drugs are used when the patients are intolerant to angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors because of the side effect of dry cough. These ACE inhibitors can cause a very severe dry cough. So these should be avoided if the patient develops the dry cough. Then the next option for these patients is angiotensin receptor blockers. These ARB has replaced ACE inhibitors nowadays. The indications for using the ARBs are almost same as that of ACE inhibitors and almost same contraindications as that of ACE inhibitors. The next very important class of drug is calcium channel blockers which includes dihydropyridine receptor blockers and non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers. So the dihydropyridine has more action on the blood vessels which includes the amlodipine and nephidipine. These drugs has more action on the blood vessels and causes vasodilation. The compelling indications uh, for the use of calcium channel blockers, especially the amlodipine, are more than 55 years of age, black African American, and the patient has angina along with the hypertension. There are no specific contraindications. The known dihydropyridine receptor blockers basically acts on more on the heart, so it has more action like much more action like the beta blockers and reduce the contractility, reduce the heart rate of the heart. So these uh, these drugs have the action of negative inotropic agents which includes the verapamil and diltiazem the indications are almost same that is age is more than 55 years and the patient has angina along with the hypertension but the contraindications for these verapamil and diltiazem includes the beta blocker if the patient is using beta blocker which is also negative inotropic so these diltiazem and verapamil should be avoided if the patient is already taking the negative inotropic agent and if the patient has bradycardia heart block and heart failure so these are the contraindications or cautiously used in these patients because these uh, next important hypertensives includes beta blockers these beta receptor blockers includes atenolol and bisoprolol also carbidolol and labitalol this labitalol and carbidolol are alpha plus beta blockers that is mixed alpha and beta blockers the indications for using beta blockers are if the patient has hypertension along with the coronary artery diseases like attacks of angina or myocardial infarction and has heart failure features. So this is compelling secondary indications for use of the beta blockers if the patient has hypertension along with these two clinical diseases. The contraindications for beta blockers includes diabetes mellitus type 1. Don't use the beta blockers in the patients of type 1 diabetes because after taking the insulin, sometimes the patient develops the hypoglycemia. These beta blockers basically mask the effect of hypoglycemia and the features of hypoglycemia will not appear in these patients because of these uh, because of these beta blockers and the other contraindications are COPD and asthma as because of the side effect of the beta blocker is bronchoconstriction so should be avoided in the patients of asthma or the COPD and also the contraindications are heart block peripheral vascular disease like Raynaud's phenomena so these are the various contraindications for the use of beta blockers and beta blockers basically reduces the heart rate and reduces the contractility in short we can say that these are negative inotropic agents the next class is alpha blockers which are not commonly used drugs this includes the alpha 1 blockers which are doxacin and endoramine prezosin alfizosin if the patient has compelling secondary indication that is 
benign prostatic hyperplasia along with the hypertension then alpha blockers can be used and the contraindications or these drugs can be cautiously used in the patients of postural hypertension because the alpha blockers causes vasodilation so the side effect is postural hypertension so these drugs should be cautiously used in the patients if the patient has developed postural hypertension or if the patient has urinary incontinence the mixed or the non-selective alpha blockers that is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 blockers includes phenoxybenzamine and phentolamine. These are alpha 1 plus alpha 2 blockers or non-selective alpha blockers. The indication for the use of this phenoxybenzamine is pheochromocytoma crisis and the contraindication is profound hypotension because of the vasodilator effect they can cause hypotension so it should be avoided if the patient has already developed the hypotension the other important class of drug is aldosterone antagonist as the name indicates these drugs blocks the receptors of the aldosterone and inhibits the absorption of sodium so there is a loss of sodium into the urine but retention of potassium these drugs include spironolactone and aplironone these drugs are used in the patients who have primary hyperaldosteronism or Cone syndrome. These are basically the secondary causes of developing the hypertension and also can be used in the patients who, are, who have refractory hypertension. Refractory hypertension means that patient is resistant to the other drugs of hypertension like patient is resistant to the thiazide diuretics and calcium channel blockers as well as to the ACE inhibitors or ARBs. So these drugs can be used in refractory hypertension and shows very good results in these patients and the contraindication for the use of spironolactone is hyperkalemia because these are potassium sparing diuretics and cause can cause the hyperkalemia so these should be avoided if the patient has already now few words about the drugs used in the or the indication of drugs in the pregnancy these drugs includes alpha methyl dopa this alpha methyl dopa is basically alpha 2 receptor blocker so due to the blockage of alpha 2 receptors in the presynaptic terminal these drugs basically reduces the release of norepinephrine and in this way reduces the hypertension and it is a very important drug and it is commonly used in the pregnant ladies and the other drugs which are used in pregnancy are labital which is mixed alpha beta blocker as we have discussed previously this alpha beta blocker that is labitalol is very commonly used in hypertensive emergencies we will discuss it in the upcoming lectures and the other indications other indicated drugs for the pregnancy are nephedipine which is calcium channel blocker and hydralazine which is arteriolodilator so these four drugs are important for the use in pregnant ladies the contraindicated drugs for the pregnancy includes ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers because these are teratogenic and fetotoxic drugs. Let's end the lecture of management of hypertension with this very important algorithm for the management of hypertension. If the age of the patient is less than 55 years, then start ACE inhibitors or low-cost angiotensin receptor blockers. These ARBs are nowadays commonly used because ACE inhibitors has a side effect of dry cough. But if the age of the patient is more than 55 years or the patient is black African American, then the first line agents are calcium channel blockers. Most commonly used are amlodipine and nephedipine. But if the patient is blood pressure is not controlled by a single drug, then the next step is add up these two drugs that is ACE inhibitors or the ARBs along with the calcium channel blockers. But if the patient become resistant to these two drugs and the blood pressure is not controlled by these two drugs, then the third step is along with these two drugs adds the thiazide diuretics the most important point here to be remembered is that low dose thiazide diuretics can be used as a monotherapy in the patients with the older age group but if the patient in the third step is resistant to all these three drugs then the next step is that this patient is has refractory hypertension then the next step is check the potassium level if the potassium level in the blood is less than 4.5 millimoles per liter then add spironolactone into these drugs because spironolactone is basically potassium sparing diuretics it will not reduce the levels of potassium so this drug is very important
to control the refractory hypertension but if the potassium levels are more than 4.5 millimoles per liter then along with all these drugs add either alpha blockers or the beta blockers so this if the patient of the hypertension comes into your clinic it is very important to ask about the risk factors and it is important to ask about the comorbids like diabetes mellitus and and history of angina and mi because with every comorbid there is change in the prescription of drugs as we have discussed that secondary compelling indications for each drug so this was whole about the management of hypertension thank you so much for watching this video